Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Duncan Still. I am a GP by background, and I am an integrative medicine enthusiast, uh, and I'm also Portland Centre for Integrative Medicine Education Manager. Um, so this has been our first face-to-face -face, uh, event that the Portland Centre has run. So welcome, congratulations for being ahead of the curve here at the very beginning. Um, and I'm here just to give you a heads up um, about future offerings. Um, ultimately, where we're headed is that we'll be um, providing an online diploma in, in integrative medicine. That's going to launch um, in 2017. It'll be largely online because that fits in best with people's busy lifestyle schedules. Um, but there will be significant bits of face-to-face -face as well. And leading up to that, and part of the online diploma when it launches, will also be several face-to-face, -face kind of standalone um, offerings, things like this, um, continuing professional development in integrative medicine open to health professionals. Um, we're a little bit um, behind in the UK, actually. This, this kind of thing, integrative medicine, is already up and running um, in the States, uh, in Europe, in Australia. Um, and Portland Centre wants to be there at the very beginning and, and seems to be. There, there isn't currently um, an integrative medicine diploma in the UK. So um, come and join us uh, on that journey. Um, the very first thing we're going to provide is uh, some learning around hypertension. Um, that's going to be an online module that launches in February of next year. Um, and we chose hypertension for, I suppose, fairly obvious reasons. Um, it's incredibly common. Um, as a GP, you see it on a daily basis. Um, it's also something that we, we struggle with, I think, as GPs and as patients. You know, patients don't always like taking the medications that we prescribe. They run into problems with them. There are side effects that are incredibly common. Um, so we don't always get on top of it with the, the traditional conventional pharmaceutical approach. Um, and the other reason uh, is that it is very amenable to integrative approaches. So we've heard about some of those today. Um, and I think even already, NICE guidelines recognize that lifestyle and diet and exercise are key to that. But I think as GPs, sometimes we feel a bit frustrated. We're not entirely sure about which diet we should be recommending or what exercise. And we also don't know the, the finer detail of all the new emerging evidence um, around the nutrition and mind-body approaches, supplements, all, some of which we've heard today. So that's the kind of thing that will be opening up um, in the hypertension module. If you're interested in knowing more, I will put around um, a kind of contact list um, so people can put down their contact details and we can be in touch about that. Um, I won't take up more of your time now. I think it's just, it's more important to hear um, about a real doctor and a real patient uh, on an integrative approach to hypertension in real life. So we're joined by Catherine Zolman, uh, and I think you're, you, we're also joined by Simon. Um, so Catherine and Simon will tell us a little bit about um, their experience of hypertension in the real world and an in integrative approach. So it really felt important to um, round, round this up and kind of c consolidate the learning from today with real life because I think that's very much where we're hoping the Portland Centre's education um, programme will really make a difference. Changing practice um, for people, people you know, attending their healthcare professionals and for the life of healthcare professionals, as Duncan hinted. So it's kind of, it feels a real honour to, to talk to Simon. We met... Um, I mean, I, I work as, so briefly, I'm a, an NHS GP, work quite part-time now in general practice, but work at a practice out in Brislington, where um, Simon, Simon's a patient. I also work in a more holistic way, because I've got a little bit more time, um, at the Pennybron uh, Cancer Care Centre out in Pill. But I hope that I practice um, integrative medicine. I was lucky enough to spend two years on the programme that Liz mentioned at the very beginning, run by Andy Weil, who's the who's really the sort of uh, you know, grandfather of integrative medicine, I guess, and whose course we're trying to emulate in some way. It was a distance learning course, but with three weeks of residential um, 
group learning. And I think the peer support that we got during that time was really massive. So I hope that my learning from those two years has really influenced my practice wherever I work, whether it's in general practice or um, at the Cancer Centre or, in fact, in the, in the work that I do at the CCG. So I really wanted to talk um, and ask Simon to tell us a little bit about his experience of coming to the doctor with high blood pressure and, and the conversations that we had, and also to really emphasise that this isn't something that really took a huge amount of time. It, it felt to me like I was pushing an open door, because actually we met t twice, really, in terms of actually getting you set, set on, the, on the path. So do you want to tell us a little bit about how, what, we, what was going on and, and what, sort of, what you came initially with? Um, Absolutely. Um, it's, it's been really useful today, actually, to, 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 uh, to see in clinical uh, expression some of the experiences that I'd had. So, but uh, essentially, Can everybody hear yeah. I, I, uh, I suppose, initially I, I, I suffered from hypertension, or it was diagnosed from 2008 onwards when I was 40. Um, and when I first met Catherine, which was about 18 months ago, um, I just had a, a, a fairly chronic stress reaction, an episode. Um, and was working through that through CBT, uh, through, uh, like Catherine, I'm, a, I'm a, one of the Altura uh, uh, Avengers, and so I'm a, a cyclist, and I'd just done a, after that chronic stress episode, Catherine described it last night perfectly, which was I, I did a forest gump and cycled off for 48 miles, um, which was the, just the first response that I had. Um, but essentially... Uh, through meeting Catherine and starting to talk about some of the, um, we, we initially I think the shock was that, that I was I am um, prescribed ten milligrams of ramipril uh, daily, and the issue that I had was really at that point that was looking insufficient, and and so we started to have the conversation about other elements that I could bring in uh, to play, and um, and I have to say since since then and and. Um, it's been very useful to, to keep drawing on all resources and the most useful and the most important element of that, I have to say, and it's not, um, uh, hopefully not, not, not too, it doesn't make Catherine too, too egotistical, but it was Catherine's influence that, that was the key one for me. In, in making, sh you know, I, I am fairly self-aware, I think, and I, I know not all patients necessarily are, but I was already doing quite a lot of things, but subsequently I've done a lot more. Um, one of the key things uh, that, that I have to talk about in, in terms of diet, um, earlier on this year I, I did a similar presentation but with um, 221st year medical students in a, a whole person care set, uh, a course and one of the things that I did there at that point I was 18 stone 7 um, and I made a, a public commitment there that I would try and do something about that. I'm now 16 stone 9 and um, so at uh, uh, the risk of sounding like some trite Weight Watchers model, um, <laughs> I, I thank you. I, I, I honestly I wasn't inviting the applause. Um, but but the, the important thing uh, about that for me was was making some sorts of public commitments and, and, and sticking with it, and that's been sustained. Um, and I did say to Catherine earlier on, um, perhaps critically, I did two resting um, BP readings today before I came over, and. Um, I was 119 over 79 on both. So, so actually, the, from being in that place 18 months ago, we were really concerned that the, the, the treatment that I was on was insufficient. Um, we, it, it looks as though that's, that's in a place now where it's being managed well. Um, and one of the other things I, I just rang, because I haven't seen him in general practice, I haven't needed to really um, for a long time, but I sort of rang, rang him up to just check where we were with things. And, I mean... A blood pressure of 119 over 70, 70, 79. 79 may sound, well, that's average, but I don't know whether you want to say what's going on in your work life at the moment. Oh, yeah, I, I, well, yes, I went into consultation today, so um, face redundancy. Um, but, but I think generally over, over time, one of the things that I'm learning to do now is to, is to not over-rationalise um, those stimuli. You know, that, that to me, I'm seeing the positives of that mm. and... Uh, I did say to Catherine last night, actually, one of the, I, I almost have managed to get myself in a place where I really want redundancy. So that's um, <laughs> that, that, that's become a, a uh, you know, I, I've, I used a lot of different methods in order to, to get where I am. But essentially, yes, it could have been 
in previous times my resilience wouldn't have been as strong um, in this situation and I wouldn't have felt the degree of control and the degree of, uh, of comfort that I have with it and I certainly probably wouldn't be able to sit here either and, and do this. And I think, I mean, you've mentioned the word resilience because I think that's such a key for me about, about all the sort of interventions that we've been talking about and about the sort of principles of integrative medicine, which is not just thinking about the blood pressure as a symptom that, that in isolation that needs to be sorted, but seeing it as, a, as part of a bigger picture and an opportunity to, to listen to your body and the messages it's giving you and to sort of build, build resilience into whatever, whatever situation there is. So I don't know whether, uh, um, I mean, I w maybe as we, as we talk, you can tell us about the particular elements of, of you know, an integrative approach that you've put into practice. You've mentioned a few, you've mentioned cycling, you've mentioned your, your diet. Tell us a little bit about Well, the, the, specifically on the diet, um, Catherine, in the first time we, we met in, in practice, mentioned the DASH diet, so it's that that I've... Um, Are people that, familiar with the DASH diet? I mean, it's a sort of diet, the DASH stands for Diet Against Systolic Hypertension, and it's quite a sort of evidence-based diet that is very similar to the Mediterranean diet and, and many other things, but yeah. But yeah. And that, that, that's been um, extremely successful to me. I, I, I have developed some perhaps slightly OCD tendencies. I am starting to look like hummus now. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, but it's been, I mean, that, that's, that's been, I've, I've, I've really, that, that was something that I found, those were, you know, we talk about uh, iterative and small changes, and, and that was something which I found very, very straightforward. All I, all I needed to do was take away some very um, basic things from my diet and add some, some others in, and so, for instance, I haven't eaten bacon for eight months, but that kind of makes sense when you've you've got hypertension um, I don't eat processed foods I don't put salt into to any food now and and I replaced sort of highly starched uh, potatoes with, with sweet potatoes real basic changes but actually also really effective ones as well and I wonder how much the fact that it was uh, you know in a way I think often we're, as doctors we're used to giving prescriptions and if we just tell people kind of you know go away eat more healthfully but the fact in a way that it was something that had a had a late, you know, had a sort of power in a way because it was particularly for, for blood pressure. I don't know, was that motivating it, it, or? It, it helped. It mm. was it was a branding and, yeah. it, and it was something specific. But then, you know, there the, the, the were other elements. I went away with a, with a piece of paper that I kept in my work bag for, for months um, that Catherine had written various things on. Um, but the most, one of the most important ones, one of the most effective ones that we, again, we touched upon last night. Um, Catherine taught me through a breathing technique of 478, which, if, if anyone knows it, is probably as simple uh, a, a, an exercise as you can do. And I do it every day on the train to and from work. And it makes an immense difference to the way that I deal with those fight or flight responses that arise during the day. And again, I think it could be added to Boris's list, but it's just one of those very simple to teach, very quick to teach, and again, something that I picked it up, up in Arizona. But and the delightful bit about it is you tell people to do four breaths like that really and and sort of at least get four breaths in every day and there's there's not many people who could say i haven't got time to do four no. breaths kind of so I, it, just making those incremental steps it's been really important as well in our house because uh, i have a 10 year old daughter who paddies a lot and she doesn't anymore with with four seven eight she uses that extremely effectively <laughs> Anything else? So we've mentioned the DASH diet, we've mentioned, you mentioned the CBT that you were also engaged in at that time. And, and how. That, that to me is probably, you know, that, that, was, that was the revolution, mm. I suppose, in, 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 in that step, in that I, I was better able, there was a particular technique called STOP, which is uh, a, a way of uh, analysing your responses to things in an emotional, a, a physical and uh, irrational way. And, and essentially, that, that to me has been the, the... It hasn't just helped me, it's been very useful. I manage a lot of managers. I, I'm, I'm the head of a department of 110 people, and um, so I'm able to, to work with the managers as well on, on their own um, stress reactions to, to situations. And, I mean, in terms of... Uh, so, can you, you know, in a sense of just... In a nutshell, what was it that helped you to be able to take such a positive and proactive sort of response to the situation? Can you, you know, for what would we as doctors need to make sure was in that consultation? I, 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 yeah, that, that's, that's a very fair point. I think it's the most important element of all. Uh, previously, I, I completely understand measures. I'm an operations manager. That, that, that's what I do. Um, so, like, 
you'll probably all hate me because I am one of those people who obsesses about binary figures and, and, uh, and averages and probably gives you the five minute uh, average appointment time that you, you have to live with. But, <laughs> uh, and actually, funnily enough, I'm, I'm starting to revisit that in my own work in life as well now. But, but one of the key things for me, Catherine, was that you recognised uh, what was in me and, and encouraged what was a, 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 a present appetite. And, and I think you, you know, uh, quite rightly, you, you, you gave me an option. Mm-hmm. I think in most circumstances, if I'd have gone back to GP surgery, taking 10 milligrams of ramipril a day as I did, alongside some other medication, um, I've taken lofpromin for 25 years, um, I think most doctors would have immediately gone to a, an additional tablet, and that would have been a commitment for a very long period of time. You didn't do that. We talked about alternatives. And, and, and it was... Um, it maybe it was an eight recognition that I had some appetite for for other alternatives, um, but but I think the most important thing that you did was personalised and listened and, and you know I, I can't stress enough that, that that to me is what was pivotal about that particular appointment and, and as you say I think we've only actually had two ten minute appointments yeah. in, in in all the time that we've we've known one another. Um, and just very briefly, I, you, you mentioned that since then, the, the only, the most recent reason you've been back to the doctor is because of a shoulder, a trapped nerve in your yes, shoulder. And I just yes, wondered, which, which I'm, I'm afraid I almost spoiled Em's yoga class <laughs> earlier on with that one. But, uh, yeah. but it was more just thinking about that resilience and how it's helped you look after your health generally. Um, maybe the depression that you mentioned that you've been back to, uh, you know, living with for a long time, but also maybe the shoulder problem. Can you tell us just how, how what's happened to your blood pressure or how you've approached that has affected other health problems now as well. Well, I, I think the one, one of the things about hypertension that I would say is that it, it obviously is cyclic with stress. So, so you, you, you have high blood pressure drives pretty poor intellectual response. And um, now that I'm managing that better, I think I'm making better decisions. So when it came to um, the shoulder injury, for instance, again, I, I, my initial meeting with the GP was pretty unsatisfactory. There's not much you can do, go away. Sort of so I, took, I, I actually was, took the treatment assertively into my own hands and went and sought physio for myself and, and um, subsequently um, acupuncture, which again I have to thank Catherine for because that was introduced to me when, on, on the day that we met the, uh, the, the students about that was whole person care. So the t- Simon sat in with one of the small group tutorials um, and, um, and an acupuncturist happened to be there. So that was an introduction by, by serendipity. But cool. Absolutely. But that, that's been the... Um, so so I've, I've taken that on. Um, sought physio immediately. So within 10 days, I'd, I, I had my first physio appointment. And that's been, that's been a total revelation uh, for me, albeit... I'm in agony today, but that, that, <laughs> um, that, that no, no, it, it, it was it was to do with the treatment yesterday. But it's it's ultimately it's for the right reasons, and it means that I won't be, you know, I've taken the time off work, and I'm I'm getting better. And you'd also were aware that it was stopping you cycling, which is part of your Absolutely. health maintenance. So it was just a more proactive, more more sort yeah. of engaged and, and activated. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. that I've noticed in Healthy City Week all week um, is this very privileged position we have as doctors and healthcare professionals to support these pivots, these changes. And it's come up time and time again. And I just think that you know this model where you're resourced to support someone with this broader vision, because I think so many people are ready for it, but, but, but it tends to just fall on empty ears unless there's someone like you or, you know, there to create this... Well, that King's Fund yeah. quote that you put up yeah. at the very beginning is our biggest yeah. untapped resource is actually what's inside people. Absolutely. What so you, you want to change, yeah. you could offer and mm. just stimulate. So I do think it's been a, a theme across Healthy City Week. Um, and again, it came up with the Dose of Nature project that... Uh, Marion Steiner as a GP could activate other GPs to start to raise awareness around prescribing green spaces. Um, so there's a lot of, lot of connections. So thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. So, Fiona. Oh, yeah. Just wanted yeah. to make sure that we do get everyone's kind of contact details, and especially if you're interested in the diploma or further learning around.
make sure you put down the uh, and so on and so on. So pass the Just take a chair. Just take a chair. Yeah. yeah. So Fiona's been beavering away all afternoon, uh, <laughs> collecting, thank you, collecting words and phrases. So can I invite you back up to, to share with us? So um, my job now is to give back to you some of the things that you've shared and come up with, and um, obviously there's far too much, really, to distill into one short piece of writing, but... Um, I've titled it, Ten Reasons to be Cheerful, Three Curiosities, and Innumerable Pieces of Wisdom. So all these things were said today. Um, they're not expected to be exhaustive, but thank you for everything you've all given. Um, we've heard from speakers, students, practitioners, patients, um, and just people who may be a number of different things all at once. Number one. Laughter yoga exists, and we were invited to make a walk to the green the most enjoyable we've ever had. And we did. A member of the public took a photo and cheered, uh, cheered us on. Now thousands of people all over the world are laughing too. <laughs> that was number two. Number three, oxytocin plus love and trust is a wonderful thing. Number four, there's a long list of things that can help the heart including, but not limited to, magnesium supplements available as a topical oil or cream available in a supermarket near you. <laughs> there are cardiologists who ask people questions like, how do you spend your time? Who do you take after? Q10 should be available to be prescribed by the end of the year. Probiotics. Good food and a food and drink diary. Tai Chi. Beta blockers, hazelnuts and walnuts, meditation and yoga, being listened to and talked with, ambulatory blood pressure monitors, and for a select few, going back onto espressos and chocolate. <laughs> Number five, the cardiolo cardiologist's kitchen website by Dr. Ali Cavandi. Your kitchen can be your medicine chest. Number six, increasing vegetables by one portion a day and nuts by two servings a week can prevent 5.2 million deaths in a year globally. Number seven, a rest E-rate is a useful gadget. I think it's a gadget. Is it a gadget? Number eight, the deeper the colour of the vegetables or fruit, the more the phytochemicals and a rainbow of food is beautiful and delicious. Number nine, people are good at making connections when the environment is right, as in a pop-up kitchen, integration in action. And number ten, a Nutribullet keeps fibre in, and a Nutribomb is when you put the entire allotment in. <laughs> And then three curiosities. Number one, if you fidget, you live longer. Number two, connecting two things that are already not just connected but entirely integrated is both curious and important. Oh, I've got, I've got four, actually. Number three, arouse and grumble. Four, working integratively doesn't need to take a lot of time. And then finally, innumerable pieces of wisdom. Don't eat anything your great-grandmother wouldn't recognise as food. Uh, num uh, number two, draw on a number of helpful things. Think laterally. Stay open to a range of resources and approaches. Let's return reductive thinking to something human. Ask questions and listen. Thank you. say thank you to a few people, but um, any observations from you uh, this afternoon? Has anything kind of really stuck in your mind? Anything you feel you can take away straight away? It's too much. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah, it's just, no, it's loads. Loads. Yeah, yeah, absolutely loads. Mine's coming. So
so that's that's what I felt is that there was just a huge amount of um, incredibly useful information there, kind of the left brain. Uh, one of the things that I, I thought was really telling, um, I asked um, William Bird last night, how do you think that we can persuade the clinical commissioning groups to really take this on uh, big time, you know, to see a social prescribing model, to see people connected to lifestyle first and drug second. And he said that the way he'd done it is to prove to them through science. And when I went home last night, I, I was a bit troubled by that because I wonder sometimes if we forget about the heart and that we can feel that something is right and that in a way um, medicine has become quite dominated by this left brain thinking. Um, and so my hope is that over the, you know, the next few years of, of this vision kind of, what I'm hoping is it will coalesce all the people out there who are interested, but that we really will be able to kind of take charge and allow some things that are non-scientific, like love and connection and trust, to really start to drive things forward. So I think it's been lovely to be stimulated in the left brain. I, I, you can feel it, can't you? It's satisfying. Um, but I also feel that this afternoon has been satisfying in terms of meeting other people who share values, trusting that maybe we can change things, because uh, sometimes we can feel a bit powerless. So thank you for all coming today. Uh, Duncan is raising the questionnaire. This questionnaire is quite important to us because we want to find out who you are, what motivated you to come. And crucially, we also want to find out what kind of things would you like to do? What kind of, if we were in the course of the year bef before we set up a full diploma and we were doing a standalone afternoon or a day, what kind of things would you like to do? The other thing is I did want to say thank you to Open Space, who've given a very reduced uh, rate for us to rent the space and to um, Healthy City Week. Uh, all of these events have been part of the Health and Wellbeing Action Group and uh, Bristol Green Capital have been fantastic in supporting this. And they've also been extremely <coughs> excited that for a whole week health has been major in Bristol and would like to you know, do this again next year. So thank you very, very much. And we do have um, some drinks. I know we've got a bit of alcohol, but as long as you only have one glass, you've got your oxytocin. <laughs> and thank you to all the speakers uh, who've come today and to Duncan, who's been fantastic in helping me set this up. Joe, who's been part of the team, and Jessica have all been part of this events week team. So lots of thank yous. And to... Kyle, who's been videoing uh, for us. So that means that we've got the chance to maybe put things online for you to watch again. If you missed the public engagement lecture last night, that too, I hope, will be on uh, the website. But I've also been told by William Bird that his Intelligent Health website's going up in the next fortnight, and his talk will be on there with huge resources again. So thank you very much. Okay. <laughs>